Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 14 of the video series where we're taking a look at all the different plugins put out by Topaz Labs. In this episode, we're going to take a look at Detail 3. Now, Detail 3 works as a plugin in Lightroom, Photoshop, Photoshop Elements, PaintShop Pro, Photo Impact, Irfan View, and Photo Effects Lab. As you can see, we're going to be using it as a plugin in Photoshop. And we're going to do a couple different images. We're going to do this one of this Blue Jay. I want to try to get some detail out of the feathers of the Blue Jay. And then we're going to do a landscape, in this case, actually a cityscape of this image of New York City. So we're going to start out with the picture of the Blue Jay. Now, as I mentioned, we're in Photoshop. And good Photoshop practice is to duplicate the background before you do any processing. In this case, because I'm using a Mac, to duplicate the background, I'm hitting Command-J. You have a PC, you hit Control-J. Now, any processing I do to this image will be done on Layer 1. If I don't like what I did, I could just toss Layer 1 in the garbage, and we could start over. So, to get this over into Detail 3, we're going to go up to Filter, down to Topaz Labs, then down to Detail 3. And it takes a second to open as it analyzes the image. And those of you that have been watching this video, these videos know that I talk about the workspace in all the Topaz product. And pretty much the, the workspace is the same in almost all the Topaz product. Um, on the left, we have collections and presets. The collections are kind of like folders that hold varying number of presets. In this case, we have five different collections, and we have these varying number of presets. In the Creative Detail collection, we have all these presets down here. Below that, we have this little gear. This little gear will allow you to create your own presets. So if you process something and you really like the processing you did, you could uh, save it as a preset so you could apply it to future images. You could delete any presets that you created. You could import presets that other people have created, and you could export presets that you've created to share with other people. To the right of that is a little camera that allows you to take a snapshot of your position in your processing, meaning you're processing along and you really like what you did to the uh, uh, image, take a snapshot. Then you could keep processing along, and if you ended up going down a rabbit hole you shouldn't have gone down, you could go back to your previous snapshot and go back in time, so to speak, and it you know gets you back to where you liked the processing. The snapshots are just specific to your session. So if you process along and you click OK and you're done, if you open it back up again into Detail 3, your processing or your snapshots will be gone. So they're only uh, they're only saved for that session. Below that, we have a menu button. You could enter your uh, product key, check for updates. You also have just a few preferences uh, that come up. You could uh, enable interactive sliders. So as you push the slider, it'll actually be processing as it goes. If your computer is slow or you find your CPU is bogging down a lot, turn this off and you'll get better performance. Enable tooltips tool when you hover over just about anything in the plugin. A little note will come up with uh, telling you what it does. And then enable auto update. It will look for updates every time you uh, start the program. Now, up above this, you can see we have original. And you can see the image is processed because uh, Detail 3 has sticky controls, meaning it remembers what you did last time when you processed an image, and it will apply those settings to whatever new image you opened up in Topaz 3. So if you want to see the original image, you could just click right here, and there's the original. Let go, or press again, and there's the processed image. Also, if you're in the Navigate tab here, you could just click with the left mouse button and hold in the left mouse button and look at the original or let go and there's the process but you have to be in this navigate tab right there uh, while we're there I might as well show you is if well we'll start here this is different zoom factors so if we zoom in let's say to 100 percent we could get a closer view and look at what uh, is being processed and what it looks like if we go over to this navigate loop we have this little square we can move that around to a specific spot on the image. If we go to where it says loop, 
we could just uh, just drag on this little uh, this navigate loop and put it to where we want it. Typically, I like to leave it right there and move this box around. That's just personal preference. Let's go out to fit. Um, this little light bulb changes the shading around the image, different shades of gray and white and black. So you can just keep pressing that until you get the shade of gray you prefer. Uh, right here, these little arrows that will close down the right panel. This arrow closes down the left panel. Now, over here, we have the actual controls. These are all the different controls that process the image. And in this case, we have in detail three, we have five different tabs containing varying number of controls. And we're going to go through these one by one in a minute. Below that, we have undo and redo. So if you did something to the image, you don't like it, you could undo it. Then you could go back and redo it if you so choose. Right here, this little button right here gives you just random settings. So if you press it, you'll get some random stuff. And it usually looks pretty bad. So you could just keep pressing it. And maybe you'll get something you like, but probably not. And if you do find something you like or just your process and you like it, you click apply and it will apply it uh, to the image. And then you could process it again. Maybe you could do some processing for the shadows, apply it, then do some processing for the highlights, apply it, stuff like that. Um, reset will reset the image back to the original image. Cancel means you'll close the program down without saving any of your changes. Click OK, it saves your changes and closes down the program. Now, what I always recommend for anyone using any plugin is that you try to use a preset to get yourself close. And as I look at the different collections, we have Creative Detail, Highlight Detail, Shadow Detail, Smooth Collection, and Stylized Detail Collection. Well, I know I don't want to use highlights or, de or shadows on this image. I want to pretty much sharpen all parts of the bird, the bright parts, the dark parts, everything. So I'm not really concerned about highlight or shadow collections. The Smooth Collection really is is not something I want for the bird. You can see it kind of gives you this blurred, you know, dreamy look. I don't want that for this bird. So we're not going to use anything in the Smooth Collection. And just glancing through the presets that are in the Stylized Detail Collection, they look like they're more for landscapes and architecture and things like that. So we're going to stay with the Creative Detail Collection. And you might have noticed if you just hover over any of the presets, you'll get a uh, preview window of what the image looks like with that preset applied. You could do that, or if you prefer, you could click right here and you'll get this little box. And this will show you all the presets side by side. So you could decide if you like one better than another. Now, as I look through them, um, I could see that overall it looks like they're really over sharpening the image. And that's one thing you really have to be conscious of when you use Detail 3, that you do not over sharpen the image. Especially if you're just starting out in photography, that is like one of the things that kind of, uh, I guess, uh, a more experienced photographer will know right away that you're a newbie is that your images tend to be over sharpened. I, I guess it's just something when we're new at photography, we just like to see all that detail. Well, try to avoid doing that. So, and it's easy to do with a, with a powerful plugin like Detail 3. So we're gonna be very conscious of that. So I'm gonna go to overall detail light and we're gonna click on that. And we're gonna apply that and see what it looks like. All right, it's applied now. There is the original. There is the sharpened. It actually did a decent job. If we uh, zoom in, you'll probably notice that it will look a little more, I guess, uh, crispy, for lack of a better term, than it looks when it's zoomed out. So there's the original. There's the processed. Original, processed. My main thing with this image is I really want to give out, br bring out some detail in the feathers. There's the original. Processed. You can see it is bringing out a lot of nice detail in the feathers. And it also is, seems to be enhancing the noise in the image. And that's one thing I want to mention, is that you should always reduce noise in the image first before you do any program that is going to add detail or, or add sharpness to the image. So always reduce noise first. The reason being is you don't want to sharpen or add detail to the noise. So on both of these images that we're going to be doing today, is I ran them through uh, Denoise 6 
before I brought them over to detail. So always reduce noise first before you do any detail. All right, so I kind of like this um, this uh, overall detail light too that I did to the image. But let's go through the different controls nonetheless. As you can see, there's five different tabs here. Usually you're not going to be doing everything in every tab. In this specific image, I suspect we're just going to be using two of the tabs. But let's go through it nonetheless. We're going to do the detail tab first. And what you're going to see is that there's six sliders here. The way to think of this, this is kind of like three groups of two. You have two different small sliders, two different medium sliders, and two different large sliders. The first slider in that group, in this case, let's look at the small. It's called small details. That is kind of like a master volume control for that specific detail group, small details. The boost is kind of like... Um, kind of like a, another volume control for that. So it, it's kind of like a multiplier. It really is like the small details will bring you so far and then boost really just, you know, adds to it quite a bit. Now, one thing I want you to be aware of with these sliders is that when you're in the middle, you're actually not doing anything. If you go to the right, you're adding detail to that group. If you go to the left, you're actually adding more of a blur to the group. Now, um, let me just show you real quick. Maybe I could get it out with, well, I think probably medium would work better. Let's go to medium details, and I'll go to this slider, and I'm going to move it all the way down. You can see how it got a little blurry. I hope you could see that. Let's move it right there. Okay. Now I'm going to go to large details. I'll move that one all the way down. Now that's that was it. See how that just got blurry? When you're in the middle at zero, okay, then you're really not doing anything with any of these detail sliders when they're at zero. All right. So just kind of keep that in mind when you do this because. As you might have remembered, when we were at that smooth collection presets, we really could add softness to the image also. So it's called Detail. The app is called Topaz Labs Detail 3. But you also could take away detail, not just add detail. So keep that in mind. Now, in this case, I do want to add some detail to these feathers. And the feathers are going to be mostly micro, small, little details. So the small detail. Uh, sliders will be more applicable for me with this image. So if I go to this small detail slider, what I typically do is I start in the middle with both sliders. I'll zero them all out if I'm not using a preset. Then I'll go with the small detail and I'll move this all the way up. And I look, well, that's way too much, right? So then I'll split it in half. So I had it halfway. Now I'm full, so I'm going to go to three quarters. Now I'm not going to get out, you know, a ruler protractor or anything like that and measure this and make sure that I'm precise there. Even look at the number here that, you know, make sure I'm at 0.75. You can see I'm at 0.62. It, that's, you know, good enough for me. I just want to see, is it still over sharpened? That's my main, like, concern here. And as I look through it, yes, it is. Okay. So I want to come back to this details and I'll split the difference again. And I'll go between middle and that three quarter area. And that's looking a little better. All right, let's just pull it down, uh, split the difference again. This is what I do. So I bring it back down about halfway. Now that's looking a little better. Now I'll go to the boost and I'll move that. In the, now I won't move it all the way up. I'll kind of move it equal to the other slider usually. And that looks a little bit too harsh. So I'm going to pull it down about halfway between where it was, which was in the middle, to where I originally put it, which was right equal to that slider. So for the sake of argument, let's say that that's good enough. It does look a little, still a little crispy, but that's okay. A lot of times if you zoom out and look at it, it won't look quite as bad. Now you can see it; it is pretty crispy still, but we're going to leave it that way because I'm going to show you some uh, tricks you could do to help reduce that later. So 
Uh, when I say crispy, that means over sharpened, okay? That's just the way I do it. I say it. All right, now in this image, there's not a lot of medium details or large details, but I would do the same thing with those sliders. I would bring like medium detail um, all the way up. That's too much, then I'll split the difference and go halfway. That's too much, then I'll split the difference again and go a quarter of the way from that center position to there. Then if that looks pretty good, then I'll, I'll mess around with boost and move that either way. Usually I don't move, move the boost sliders very far from the middle. I tend to keep most of my processing done with the actual small, medium, and large detail sliders. Now again, for the large details, I'll turn that way up. Obviously that looks horrible. Um, I'm just, for the sake of time, I'm going to leave that right in the middle because that's fine. All right. One thing I forgot to mention, I shouldn't, I should have, at the very top, you could see these, there's these little check tabs. We have overall shadow and highlights. I've been doing adjustments to the entire image. What's really cool about this plugin is you could just um, adjust the detail for the shadows independently or the highlights independently. And that's really cool, I think. So you could really sharpen just like the white feathers compared to the black feathers or, or vice versa. Now in this case, I'm sharpening the entire thing. So that's fine, but I wanted to point that out. That's really a cool feature. So I'm done with this detail panel. Now, next is the tone panel. And the controls in here are very much like the controls that are in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. We have an exposure slider and it works exactly like you would think it does, is you turn it up, you're gonna increase exposure, you turn it down, we decrease exposure. If you double click right on the name, you'll reset the sliders to their detent position. We could add some contrast, stuff like that. Now I'm gonna tell you the truth. I don't like to use these sliders in any plugins that might have them. I prefer doing that in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. So uh, in this case, to save time, I'm not gonna go through because you guys probably have watched my Lightroom videos, my Photoshop videos, and you know what exposure does, contrast does. You could turn highlights up, you could turn highlights down, things like that. Now, as I look at this image, one could argue that the sh shadows maybe are a touch dark. So let's just bring up the shadows just very slightly, okay? So just like that, I'm not gonna do anything with the whites or bla uh, blacks. Cyan red, you're gonna be actually affecting like any red pixels. You're either gonna make them more red or more cyan when you move that slider. Magenta green, similarly, you're gonna be doing magenta and green. And yellow blue, so you're really gonna be affecting the blue, making it more yellow, adding more yellow to it, or taking the yellow away from it. Um, that is more obvious in this blue jay, but I'm, I'm not doing anything with that. You could add grain. Sometimes it might sound counterintuitive, but if you add a little grain to an image, it makes it look a little sharper. Uh, in this case, I don't want to add any grain. All right, I'm still really over sharpened. I understand that, but bear with me. Um, the color, these are the top of the basic panel in Lightroom. We could uh, change the color temperature. We can make it warmer. We can make it cooler. We could affect the tint. We can make it more towards bluish, more towards the greens. Um, saturation, we could increase saturation. We could just make it black and white, if you so choose. Saturation boost, just really is, again, just kind of compounding what you did with that saturation slider. I'm not going to do anything here, so to turn it off, just click that checkbox. You don't even have to worry about it. Deep blur, um, I would say be careful with this. This is where you could get into the issue of kind of over sharpening. And a lot of people think that if they have an out of focus image, they could come in here with deep blur and kind of make it in focus. And I've yet to see a plugin that really could correct for an out of focus image. You really have to be careful in camera and get that right in camera. So you could, you know, come in here, turn on the checkbox first of all, and if I could grab the slider. Oh, preview must be greater than 50%. It helps if I read what I'm doing. Okay, let's put it over there. And you could turn the blur size up and you could see what it does. So be careful with this. Suppress artifacts. Sometimes when you sharpen it so much, you'll get these artifacts 
in this image, as you could see there. And if you turn that up, it's going to try to suppress the artifacts. The best thing I could recommend is get it right in camera and don't use any of these um, post processing tricks to try to get better focus because typically you won't be able to do it. All right. All right. Now we're going to go back to fit. And this is the part that I think is most important when you're doing detail or any type of sharpening is the effect mass. Ask yourself, do we really need to sharpen this entire image? And really the answer is no. We really don't need to sharpen the entire image. We just need to sharpen the feathers on the bird. And so what we're going to do is we have a white mask. White means all the processing is being put on, being applied to the image. I want to invert it. Now watch what happens when I click on invert over here. Look at the image when I do that right now. I'm right back to my original image. The black mask is blocking everything. So what I want to do is I want to paint on my black mask. And I, you have like brush brushes. You could like uh, move these adjustments around for one brush, then get another brush and move them around differently if you so choose. And then you have an eraser where you could actually erase what you did. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to put strength all the way up. I'm going to have the hardness towards the middle. So that'll give us a tiny well, maybe a little bit harder. We're going to have some softness on that brush. I want flow all the way up. Now, edge aware is pretty cool, and it works pretty well. If you have a distinct edge, like maybe the edge of this little piece of wood here and the background, it will it will know that you just, let's say if I'm painting this way, that I want to apply the sharpness to the wood and not the background. In this case, though, since we really want to do the entire bird, and there are edges here. We have white feathers edged up against black feathers and black feathers against blue feathers. I, I don't want it to think I'm just doing part of the feathers. I want to do the all the feathers. So I'm going to take edge aware all the way down. All right. Now we're going to get, well, that's a good brush size, I guess. And what we're going to do is as I paint on the feathers, you could see that there's this white being painted. That is allowing the sharpening or that detail, see as I do it, to come through. Now, as I did that, you could see all that over sharpening I did on purpose has come through. Well, we really didn't want to do that, did we? We wanted to uh, just let a little of it. So here's what you do. Let's take strength now all the way down and let's get a bigger brush. And I'm going to paint across my image. Now I'm painting in black. Okay, so I'm hiding it again. So I have this black mask back. I'm going to put strength or somewhere towards the middle, right around 0.50, give or take. All right. Now I'm going to get a smaller brush. Now, the first time I painted in white, the second time I painted in black. Now when I paint, I'm painting in a shade of gray. So I'm not letting all that sharpening through. I'm just letting part of that sharpening through. And that's what I want. I don't want it over sharpened. So now be careful because we do not have edge wear checked. So we want to be careful that we're not really going out outside of the bird's feathers, more or less. We want to make sure that we're just doing feathers and nothing else. Okay, if you do make a mistake and you accidentally paint it over here like that, what you would do is you would take strength all the way down and then you would come and paint it away by painting in black. Okay. Like that. All right. So now we have the mask and I painted just the feathers. And that's what I think is one of the most powerful tools in this uh this plugin is you could really sharpen it and maybe bring it a little bit too much. And then with the mask, you could paint in either white, black, or a shade of gray to really dial in the amount of sharpening you want to apply for that image. Or in this case, I should say the amount of detail you want to apply to the image. Now I'm done with the image. Um, I'm going to click OK. It's going to save it and it will probably beep once 
and we'll be back in Photoshop and give us a second and then once we're in Photoshop we have some tools we could use there also all right here's our image in Photoshop there is the before in the after the before after you could see I really over sharpened it in detail but with that layer mask that I used in detail I brought it down quite a bit so um, it's more acceptable let's put it that way now if it still was over sharpened you could bring the opacity of this layer down and I like using the scrubby slider if I just hover over the word opacity and it turns into that little hand and then I click down with my left mouse button and I could dial it down. If I dial it all the way down to zero, it's as though that layer isn't even there. In this case, 100% is not bad. All right, let's go over to our other image, this cityscape image. We're gonna duplicate the background by hitting Command J. Again, if you have PC, it's Control J. We're gonna go up to Filter, Topaz Labs, Detail 3. Now this one we're gonna do a little quicker. Now, because this is a cityscape, I suspect we're gonna find a decent um, preset in that last preset package. I believe it was called stylized presets or something along those lines. Stylized, stylized detail collection. So we're going to do that and then we're going to go to this block right here and we're going to see them all side by side. Now if, one thing I really want to bring out is you can see how there's kind of this shadow being cast by some of these clouds in the background and I like that and I really want that brought out. You can see how some of the presets, it's not as definitive as in some of the other presets. So let's go through. I also, you know, I really like enhanced guys. So this one looks pretty cool. That's cloud detail too, so that's, you know, makes sense. You can see how abstraction is real blurry in this case. Uh, let's see here. I want to do one that's overdone again so I could show you something else. Okay, let's go with uh, blue sky right there because that's really too blue. But let's go with that. And you could see there's the original image. There's our processed image. Im original image, processed, original, and processed. All right. Now, I think the detail's fine. So I, 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 I'm not going to do anything with the detail. Um, with the tone. You can see how this yellow blue slider got pushed all the way this way and it really made it a little bit too of a, a deep blue. So I want to pull that to the right. Okay, so that looks pretty decent to me. Um, shadows are a little dark, but I'm afraid it's going to brighten the whole thing. Yeah, it is. So we'll leave that alone. Okay, so that's not bad. Uh, the color, we have saturation peaked up just a little bit. That doesn't look too bad. Uh, tint and temperature in the middle, that's fine. We're not going to do anything again with the blur, and I don't think I need to do anything with the effect mask. So I'm not super happy with it, but it's okay. So I'm going to click OK because I'm going to show you a couple things in uh, Photoshop. All right, so there's the processed image. There's the original image, processed image, and so on. All right, so what we're going to do do well i think the the sky is kind of cool but the city is just a little bit too much now again i could go up to this opacity um uh, control for that layer if you you know i could go in and i could turn the opacity down but that does the entire image and i don't want to do the entire image so i'm going to get a layer mask all right so i put a layer mask on there and this is pretty much the same way it works in the uh, detail three we have the mask when it's white, everything is coming through. We want to paint in black or a shade of gray. So I'm going to get the brush tool by hitting the B key on my keyboard. And I want to bring the opacity of my brush down to maybe 50. That's around 50, all right? And that's a pretty big brush. It's kind of a hard brush. Um, let's bring it, make it a little softer. And then we're going to paint right across the city part of the image. Just a little bit. All right, because I just think it was just a little bit overdone in the in the buildings. And there's before, and there's after. Before, after. Now, 
I'm very happy with that. So that's it. That's how you use Detail 3. Now you can see, again, I used it as a plugin in Photoshop, but it works in all those other programs I mentioned at the top. Um, you know, I think it's a really, really great plugin. I really do like Detail 3. I know a few professional photographers, every single image they use, they either send to print or they send out to their client, they use Detail 3 all the time. And the best thing I could try to uh, encourage you to do, just remember less is more. I overdid everything on purpose in a way, just to show you how you could dial it down later, uh, either by using the opacity control for a layer or using a layer mask and things like that. So just you know, keep that in mind, less is better. Um, all right, that's it for episode 14. I'd like to thank everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know. I'll see what I can do to answer them. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon.